welcome sisters to our new member webinar. Uh, as you all know, my motto this year was together we are stronger, together we thrive. And um, that has been felt everywhere this year as chapters have worked together to do so many wonderful things um, for the Daughters of Penelope within their communities, within their own chapter. So we're very thankful for that. Hmm. All right, who are the Daughters of Penelope? Well, the Daughters of Penelope are a multi-generational international women's organization. Our story started in San Francisco in 1929 by Alexandra Apostolides Sonnenfeld. I'm gonna change this. Um, wanna, excuse me for one sec. I just wanna try and change my view so that I can, uh, cause I'm losing some of my presentation here. I don't know how to do that. I'll get across the top. Okay. Um, and the, that is Sister Alexandra, um, her portrait at the bottom in the early 1920s. We are affiliated to the Order of Ahepa and to our junior orders of the, the uh, Maids of Athena and Sons of Pericles. Now, my story is definitely not unique. Our family was an Ahepa family, my father, my mother, and my two sisters. Uh, my sisters and I attended events very young. We went to uh, fundraising events. We went to name day celebrations. We went to conventions, not that they had conferences back then. So we had um, been initiated into the Ahepa family long before we became members. And I was initiated at the age of 18. We did not have Maids of Athena in Saskatoon where I was raised. And so we automatically were um, initiated to the Daughters of Penelope at 18. And my first impressions were basically do what I was asked to do. You know, we learned about the organization and what it was all about and about the family, about the philanthropy that we did, about keeping our Greek traditions in our homes. And it was um, an interesting first impression to the organization. My mother had a very large influence on me as a member of the Daughters of Penelope. She was the first, uh, our first district governor for our, our district. She started uh, many of the chapters across Canada or was influential on them being started. She was the first grand vice president of Canada for the Daughters in 1961. And following her, I followed my own path and was the Grand Vice President for Canada from 1984 to 1988, uh, from 93 to 94. And then in 2016, I became the Grand Governor for Zone 5. And here I am now serving my second term as Grand President. And I consider myself very, very lucky. Our mission about our history and about our mission. Now, um, there's quite a bit of reading there. I can read it for you. I can um, very quickly, but this will all be up on our website so that you'll be able to maybe share it with your chapters or your districts at a later date. So, and some of you are already familiar with this information. Basically, our mission statement is to promote education, philanthropy, civic respons responsibility, family, and individual excellence. And so the, what Elena has expanded on each one of these so that you have a little bit more detail about our family of excellence. Uh, Sister Alexandra, she had many say she had a dream. I really believe that she had a mission. And her mission was to create a women's organization to work along with the men to be to be the auxiliary to the Order of Ahepa, which now we are an affiliate to the Order of Ahepa, which has a little bit of a different connotation. Uh, the first chapter was in San Francisco and EOS number one, which we just beautifully celebrated our um, 91st anniversary last month uh, on in virtual celebration. And the first convention, she became grand president in 1931. But I, you know, I believe it was a mission for her to do that. And I can just imagine what she would be thinking now, knowing that we have chapters in 
of course, in the United States, lots of chapters in the United States, in Canada, throughout Greece, in Europe, and then we have one chapter in Australia. So I think she would be very, very proud uh, of what we have accomplished. We know that um, education is very, very important. We have a scholarship program, which is administered through the Daughters of Penelope Foundation. And every year they present at least 25 scholarships to deserving women. And Eleanor Roosevelt once said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So we hope these students that are receiving scholarships have wonderful dreams and are able to see those materialize and come to fruition. We have a grassroots program, civic responsibility. And, you know, we have gone to our uh, leaders in governments to talk about issues that um, pertain to us, especially with the Violence Act and also with issues that pertain to Greece in many ways. Um, we, keep, we keep tabs of what our, um, our leaders do and say and participate in. And so we, we appreciate all that they do for us. Philanthropy. Uh, philanthropy and volunteerism have been our pillows, pillars for many, many years since our existence. And you'll notice the same mission that was established in 1929 is the same mission that we have today 91 years later. And so they, it, they have stood the test of time. Maybe we do things differently, but we certainly are following the same mission that was established in 1929 the projects that we have undertaken uh, over the years. We have projects that we pick up at the, we choose at the Supreme Convention and, and um, some are repeated, especially the ones that we have for uh, Penelope House and Penelope Place for family violence centers. And some of the others that we pick up on, on more annual basis, mandatory and voluntary projects. So, uh, and again, it's the members. We keep going back to the members because it is the members that uh, do all this, this very, very difficult work and to follow through. Housing, the HEPA Housing Corporation has awarded over $400 million from the Department of Housing and Urban Development to provide housing for seniors and not only a HEPA chapters have started seniors housing, so have some of the daughters of Penelope chapter started. Angela McGramas I saw is on this Zoom call and I know she has been on the housing board and uh, would probably be able to give you more information in terms of how many the daughters of Penelope have started. I know that past grand president, um, um, uh, Angie Spiliopoulos and Mary Virgis, I know, have worked in their areas to get seniors housing established. We recognize athletics and every year we choose um, an, a recipient of an award for the Athletic Hall of Fame and that is done every year at the convention. And then of course we, Hellenism, the one of our tenants as well. And that's also very important to us. So what are our strengths? Well, as I've said repeatedly, our membership is our greatest strength. What they do, it just energizes me when I sit in on some of these meetings and hear some of the things they have done uh, for their members and for the community at large. Our friendships. You know, I've been going to Supreme Convention since 1984 and I have made many friendships that I renew every year and uh, some throughout the entire year. So the, the friendships are very vast. Our commitment. We have a commitment to all the, the statements in our mission to follow through and help the best that we can. And we have a willingness to learn. We learn from our new members. We learn from those that have been stalwarts of our chapters. And we learn from those who hold the history, the charter members who hold the history. There's always a willingness to learn. And some of the younger members are the ones that can lead the way, especially when it comes to technology and you know, being out and working. They may hear, from, of, they may hear about some wonderful things that would uh, be of value to our chapter as well and our shared experiences, because we all have something of value to offer the chapters, each and every one of us. 
And of course, you know the word philotimo, which is about goodness, selflessness, giving without wanting anything in return, and the force that drives us to think about the people and the world around us. What do we do? Well, we laugh a lot. We organize events and fundraise towards our charitable efforts and programs. We go for coffee, lunch, dinner. Basically, we eat a lot. We belong to book clubs. And again, we become friends. And the more friendly we become, the better we are work, that we work together and bounce ideas off of each other. So, so it all is positive. These are some of the things that we do. Here I am uh, from last February presenting a check to Meals on Wheels. We were fortunate enough to be given uh, $50,000. And the only stipulation was is that we give it to help seniors. So we have been giving $10,000 uh, each for the last three years. We have two more years to go to Meals on Wheels. And it is not only a program that provides meals for people, it also provides people to that come in and check on you. And you know, you have some companionship with these people that come to visit you on a daily basis. Uh, here we have past grand president Eva Jean Fomalot presenting the Athletic Hort Sports Hall of Fame award at the convention with the uh, chairman Katina Tisopoulos. And here we have the grassroots. We have Capitol Hill Day each year. And so this is when uh, members go to Washington and um, are able to meet with their Congress people, with their senators, and have dialogue with them about issues that are important to them. What can the Daughters of Penelope do for you? Well, there's that word friendship again. We can offer friendship. We can offer a feeling of belonging. We can offer leadership opportunities, networking, many professional women who would like to network. Uh, we, provide, we, we offer travel hopefully one day soon. Uh, we share ideas and again, we learn from each other. So, so where do you go from here? Well, if you are interested, I'm sure that the uh, members who have brought you to this little meeting today would be willing to walk you through and be your mentor. You can check our website or you can email me. I'd love to hear from all of you. So that is the end of my little presentation. So Elena, we can open it up to questions. As I don't know why I'm not able to get my um, gallery view. Uh, you know what, why don't you switch back and make me the host and that'll probably log you out. I'm just showing six people. Oh, because you have to stop sharing the screen. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Take the share off. Okay. Well, I got to find that to do that now. Hmm. Okay, share All my right. screen off. Perfect. All right, there you are. Oh, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Madam President, so, did you, um, I remember you had mentioned uh, maybe opening it up to um, some of the sisters that perhaps want to share their story yes. of how they joined. Yes, I thought that it would be nice if there were some sisters that would like to share with possible new members, uh, how they joined their vision of the daughters or what, how it has, has um, they've been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And it, my tongue is gone. Um, their perceptions of the daughters and why they are members of the Daughters of Penelope. If there's anyone that would like to share, we'd love to hear your story. Sister Xanthi? So You're muted. Yes, I am muted, but now I'm unmuted. Hello, everybody, and I'm so glad to see you all. And I think this is a very important talk. Uh, I would like to share my story because I think it is unique. I think I'm the only one who joined the daughters 
because I was looking for an organization with Greek roots to join. I checked the web, I checked other organizations, and then I said to myself, okay, I'm from Thessaloniki originally. And I said, there is an Ahepa hospital in Greece. So let's check Ahepa family. And I checked Ahepa family and I want to become a member of the Ahepans. And the Ahepans said, no, 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 no. You have to go to the daughters. And I said, who are the daughters? The daughters are the female branch of the Ahepa family. So about eight years ago, yes, I called the then president of the Toronto chapter and she said, yes, of course. And uh, how do you know about us? I said, I don't know anything about you, but I would like to join because I read nice things about you. Therefore, even eight years ago, what I read really impressed me. And I said, this is, this is an organization that fits my own style. I don't want to belong to an organization, let's say the Thessalonians or the, I don't know, kind of very local topic uh, uh, organization. <laughs> and ever since I have been very pleased with my decision. And I think I made the right decision and it was an intellectual approach. And uh, I thank you all for being what you are because Basically, you fulfilled my dream. I want to find a balance between being in North America for so many years, having Greek roots, very strong Greek roots. Uh, and uh, my husband is English. I don't speak uh, Greek at home. Thank God to Eleni who speaks Greek and we speak exercise. And you brought an, an equilibrium in me. You brought the good part, the good side of Greece back to me. And I'm very thankful. And I'm very grateful for being part of this organization. And this is my story. Thank you. Thank well, you, Xanthi. Uh, <laughs> Anyone else? Sister Kathy, our Grand Vice President, Kathy Bazookas. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see everyone again. Um, I do have the same story as most have before. Joining the maids, going on vacations with the parents, <laughs> all a part of the Ahepa family. But I have to say, um, I lived in Michigan for 16 years, had come back after being married, going through a divorce, um, and the daughters actually brought me back to life. Um, my mom was the acting district governor at the time, many times over. And Angela McGramis, between my mom and Angela McGramis and Connie Pilalis, they pulled me up from being president of a chapter to being the recording secretary for district. And that's where it all started, but I was not active for very long in be I was not active in between the maids and getting married and going to college and all of that. But when I did come back, um, it just started snowballing and now I'm grand vice president. <laughs> so the daughters have really played a huge role in my life the last, 15 years, and I thank you for that. I'm very proud to be a daughter of Penelope. Uh, Sister Eliana. Um, so my story, it's kind of interesting because um, I didn't know anything about daughters of Penelope. Uh, myself, I'm from the region, I'm from Bulgaria originally. So I know the entire region, I'm very familiar with everything, but when I was in the States and I, I married younger in my twenties. And when I was getting divorced towards my thirties, um, I moved to a different location. So I joined St. Mark and I got familiar with the daughters of Penelope. And for me, what really um, impressed me was the, uh, the, uh, the desire to help others. This is one of the things, the philanthropy, I would say. You know, it's one of the things that really, uh, and I always like to be part of organizations that help others. It's part of myself through my entire life. But that really um, called me into this making goodness, bringing people a smile. You're actually doing something nice. And I, I think it's great mission for us. And when we just initiated four new members tonight, 
uh, I just had our meeting and uh, it's, it was what I shared with them was uh, we strive to do, to actually do good. We, we want to be seen as an organization that cared about people. We believe that when we're together, we can do better. So that was pretty much my message. And uh, I mean, thank you all. I, I, I really enjoy that I have the chance to make people smile when we give a little bit from ourselves. So that's my story. Thank you. Uh -oh. um, I see, I, I, I don't have your name on. I see your hand up oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, with the dark and the, do you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I can't. Oh, um, sister, this is Kathleen Courtney from EOS. Um, I'm the oh. Irish Catholic calf of a <laughs> Greek Orthodox marriage. And um, it was about, and my husband had a good friend who always said, you know, you really should get involved with the Daughters of Penelope. And I'm involved in a lot of other things. And 10 years ago, I decided, you know, if he's going to go to HEPA meetings, I'll go to the Daughters meetings. And I, I have to tell you, it's exactly what you said, sister. It is um, a supportive, loving, caring group of women. I'm sure each chapter can look at their members and say, my God, aren't we fortunate? At EOS, I say it at every board meeting and I'm absolutely amazed and so very thankful. So for all the things that the daughters do going forward or going out, what the daughters as a group bring to individuals in terms of the emotional safety net, particularly in today's environment and the caring support is absolutely remarkable. Just so thank you very much to the daughters. Thank you, Kathleen. Melissa. Yes. Hello, um, hello sisters. Um, I'm Melissa Martakis. I am the president of Cresida 438. So you could just imagine with such a high number, we're a very young chapter. Um, we, I guess our mantra is we put the fun in fundraising. Like we have fun and we've also been known as the food chapter because we have renowned chefs in our chapter. So every meeting, which should be a meeting becomes a party. So it's really, very nice. We do food demos and we really try to engage with every age group. Um, our youngest member is 22 and our oldest member is 82. So we have a range, right? We like to get the young ones because they bring our national, our average down. <laughs> um, we come up with really, I think, you know, in this time of COVID, we're not able to do our person in person fundraisers, but we're trying to find ways to be relevant, right? We try to be sensitive to the community and the needs and we try to find some ways like we have a mask fundraiser because we have a sister that is a seamstress. We do, um, we have a soap fundraiser with a little mati, it's a mati soap with a mati inside um, because we have a sister who makes soap. Like it's really kind of great. So we try to stay relevant. Um, but like you said, um, I don't remember which sister it was, but we have fun. We really do enjoy each other and we don't put pressures on each other. And when you don't do that, people want to do more. So, you know, we, it's a really nice chapter. And like I said, our membership ranges from ages 22 to 82. We just um, initiated four new members, one reinstate and actually three new members, a reinstate. And then our 82 year old member is a reinstate. So, well, not a reinstate, we remember, we made her a new member because we can't find her information and who wants to pay 60 years of back dues? Nobody. <laughs> so um, I said, just come in as a new member and you'll always be our big sister. So Wonderful. it's nice. And finding the time, like we, be, during this crazy time, people have been moving around and we have, we call them our remote offices. Like we have a sister that moved to Florida. We have a sister that's in Greece and we call them our remote office. You know, it, that's just because you're not in Union County, New Jersey, doesn't mean you can't be a sister. So that right. someone has a hashtag on Instagram that says daughters of Penelope everywhere. 
and daughters of Penelope are everywhere. Like it just because you move out of the chapter area doesn't mean you can't belong. So our mantra is, although we're apart, we're greater together. So that's our little story. So we're coming, we're just going into our fourth year now and we're doing okay. So great. But it's with the support of all of our senior members. Like you guys come to the table with this wealth of knowledge. Elena comes to me with incredible patience because I'm always sending her emails and and etc because i'm still learning right and being a president is tough because people look to you but i have a nonprofit background so i try to bring some of that to this organization or to my chapter but again i do look to the senior members uh for for guidance and i like to thank georgette and evelyn siatis and antoinette and joanne zella and Dina, uh, you know, all our D5 brass before really like being the, the beacon, right? That we know that where that light is and we can always go to them. So thank you all. It's a pleasure to be part of this organization. Thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, any, I'm gonna check the second page. Anyone wanna share how they're getting into the daughters? Hope, hope. Hope, yeah, I wanna hear from you. Hope. Hi, yeah. how are you? Um, we got into the daughters. Um, I was a maid of Athens. I wasn't a maid of Athena. I was a maid of Athens. And I lasted until I was 21. And then in 1972, my mother was president of the daughters. And she said, I want you to get all your friends and come into the daughters. And I said, well, we don't want to be with you old ladies. And she said, forget about it. We've got a convention coming. We need young blood. So we joined. And there's still a few of us that uh, that were in that class that came in are still are still around and doing it. And and now we have a nice group of young ladies that are basically running the daughters. There's a few of us that are still in there, but uh, basically. So um, we started going to national conventions in 1972. Um, and I'm off and on now. I don't come all the time, but it's been fun. It's been fun. And uh, we've grown through the years. So mine was a funny way of getting into the daughters rather than the more serious way that some of you have talked about. <laughs> but anyway, and, I had, I, and I had the honor of being on Hope's Mother's Grand Lodge, 1985-1986. Yeah. So some very good, happy memories there. So yeah, thank you, my Hope. Father and my father always liked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a couple of years that after the convention was over, your mom and your dad and I would go out and have dinner. And uh, so we we had a good time. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna check that second page. Anyone else, um, some hands up, would like to share how they got into the daughters or their story of the daughters? Bev, Bev Kennedy, oh, yeah. Grand Governor's own four. All right, I've unmuted. Well. I am uh, one of actual, I was surprised, several non-Greeks. And I had worked for years and years, very active in the food industry in the olives. And I always felt the need to do something beyond just work, work, work. So I was talking to my neighbor one day and she explained the daughters. And I thought you had to be Greek to join, but she assured me not. So. I joined and immediately took an officer position and then over, uh, that was 2009 and over several years, um, I moved on to the district lodge and then um, on to the um, foundation for a couple of years and then on to the grand lodge. And what the daughters, beside what you do to give to the daughters, they give you so much more. Uh, I gained a huge amount of confidence in myself. I was never really real confident about being able to express myself and, you know, feel like I was really, you know, I did good in, in my job, but beyond that, it was like, I, I'm not too sure about things. So I found a, a huge amount of confidence and a huge amount of friendship that is just irreplaceable. Yeah. So no matter what you give, and we give a lot in many ways, 
but you get back so much more than you ever could give. And it's just a, it's a good rewarding feeling. Thank you, Beverly. Eva. Oh, I'm mute. Eva, you're muted. <laughs> there you go. I thought you had it. No. Oh, Celia, you might be able to um unmute her. Unmute her. Um, click on her screen because maybe she can't see the pop up. let you do it like the little three dots in the corner of her box yeah it, it, i'm it, all it's saying is ask to unmute oh okay yeah i was hoping she would see the pop-up can she hold down the space bar i don't know that works on a computer Yeah, I don't know if she's on her phone or. Like she's on, she can't. Uh, well, we'll see if there's someone else on another page and oh, we'll come back to Eva. It's working, Eva. Oh, it is? Oh, oh no. I hear her. Can Good. you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay. I am the last immigrant that my church, some of the founders of Yos number one, Arit Margelos, Eni Zucanatos, Ethel Zanakis, they approached me and they said, we want you to be a daughter of Penelope. I love it. I went in, they make me secretary, <laughs> they make me president. We brought a lot of members and I have a friendship which is worth a million of dollars. Also, I satisfy myself because I'm a person who I love people, I love community, I want to do good things and I find satisfaction in that group. We have to initiate two new members. Elena, is it going to be a video of this presentation which we can email it to the new members before we initiate them? Of course. Okay, thank you. It's <laughs> nice to see all of you. Thank you, Grand President, for all the good work you do for us. We really appreciate your efforts to keep us together. Thank you very much. And I appreciate everything that you do. You have a great enthusiasm, Eva. You hear it when you speak. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let me check if there's anyone else that would like to share their story of getting Tina. No, that's me. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, I actually joined the Daughters of Penelope to spend more time with my mother. Um, we do full up with us, but I thought the Daughters of Penelope would be a, a nice additional way to, you know, to do more with her and to spend more time together. And um, when I joined, our chapter was, was on the smaller side. It was, you know, it was, it was a nice chapter, but it was on the smaller side. And then um, slowly a few more, not that I'm really young, but more, more <laughs> members my age, we're joining and um, just have such a beautiful group of women. Um, everybody, so many different people that bring different, something different to the organization, a lot of talents, just a lot of really good hearted people. And um, like our age, our age range is from 25 to 92. So uh, we have a, we have a, you know, a very high average in the age, but um, it's, it's wonderful how we have the yolk the older generation and the younger generation, and we're working very well together. And, um, you know, so now I'm the president. <laughs> so I got really involved. And of course, you know, pulling a lot more people into our organization, which is growing. And I'm so happy that I did join and, you know, looking to do a lot more, a lot more with our culture and with, with philanthropy and um, 
they're just happy to work alongside all of you wonderful women. So thank, thank you. you very much, Tina. You're welcome. I'm checking for hands. I'm checking on three screens. Well, that's uh, Antoinette. I'll bite. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's actually a funny story. And I'm going to try to make it as brief as possible. Um, every last Tuesday of the month, my mother would go to a meeting. Didn't know where she was going, but I knew she was the treasurer. Uh, she was uh, nominated to be chapter Penelope of the year. And we have a good sense of humor in my family. And my little cousin sent her a card congratulating her for being a daughter Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying that wrong. Um, by being a, uh, a daughter who wears penny loafers. And, and it was literally a penny loafer oh. with the penny in the card. Okay. So from there on in, where's mom going on Tuesday nights? Well, she's going to the daughters that wear penny loafers. So my mom has five daughters. And she has she would always ask all five of her daughters, would you please join the daughters? Would you please join the daughters? I am daughter number four. So finally I said, fine, I'll join the daughters of Penelope. That same night, my little sister joined and the cousin who made the penny loafer card. And <laughs> Georgette can attest to this because Georgette was there, Evelyn was there. Um, I believe Kathy Politis was the district governor and they, we all got initiated and we looked down on the floor and there was a penny at our feet. To this day, <laughs> we still don't know who put that penny there. But I was initiated in March and by April, I was elected the chapter recording secretary. And then within, uh, did that for a year, got reelected as recording secretary but went to the district convention and mom who was the president was elected to the district lodge and then therefore i became the chapter president and that was uh, almost 23 years ago and i have to say um on a personal note um the daughters came to me at the right time in my life um I, it, it gave me something that was missing, and I truly appreciate that. I have many, many friends across the world because of the Daughters of Penelope, and I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars, you know what I mean? And that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Antoinette, who's District Governor of District 5. So I think that's, I don't see any other oh, hands up. I see Sharon Topolo? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, my story's a little different. My parents were never involved with a half of our daughters, but my sister was. She was a maid of Athena, and then she went into the daughters. Um, some of you may might remember her, Alma Toomey. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and so she uh, had been after me for years and years, but I got married young and started off having four kids right off the bat and was very involved and went to work full time. But she finally caught me and <laughs> she got me into the daughters and uh, I've only really been active maybe the past six or eight years. Um, before that, she would always, you know, tell me about the daughters and she was going off to conventions and meetings and everything. But I never really had the time at that at that point in my life to do, donate my time properly to the daughters. So now I'm in it. I'm the district governor, and uh, I'm enjoying it, meeting a lot of new people, and having a wonderful time. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And Angela McGramas. Yes. Um, well, in Indiana, we have a saying: when you join. The Ahepa family, it's Anipa Dres Kehires and Late Hate Andres. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I was born in Canada and um, I went to my first Ahepa convention because of that happened. Tony Damacus from Canada 
talked me into going down with him. And that's where I met my husband. And the first thing he said when we got married is you have to join the daughters. <laughs> so we'd been attending conventions um, many, many years until he passed away. And now our chapter is one of the few that does have a housing project. And we just learned last night that uh, thank you to Andrew Caffis, we are actually going to have our housing project be one of the first senior housings that's going to have the antibodies against the coronavirus. Oh, good. So um, AHEPA has worked hard with us, Andrew Caffis has, and all of, our all of our 91 senior projects in the United States will be one of the first after the workers the COVID workers to receive the vaccine. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great news. Thank you. Uh, well, sisters, I think that's it. Well, I think that's been wonderful. I hope that um, possible new members, you got some value out of this evening's presentation and learned a few things as to why we are all part of the Daughters of Penelope. And uh, for those of us that are in it, I hope it's reinforced why we're Daughters of Penelope. So I want to thank you for joining this evening. Again, feel free to email me, feel free to email Ellen at headquarters. Um, we just wanted to share that information with you. And I thank you for joining. I hope you all are able to enjoy a holiday season, whatever it's going to be this year.